we want to talk about Americana Railroad also. But you had mentioned earlier Lady Singh Lightfoot, and I was so curious about this that you, I, I listened to the whole thing. We're both big Gordon Lightfoot fans. Oh, that's great. Yeah, uh, aren't we all? I yes. Mean, he's, uh, Gordo's I, is the best. He's the best. You sang Early Morning Rain. I did. Yes, yes. which is beautiful. <laughs> totally Thank loved you. it. How'd you get involved? I, I didn't even know about this project until we knew we were going to have you on, and I was kind of digging. Well, being a Gordon Lightfoot fan forever, and I'm going to credit my brother who's um, – uh not with us anymore but he's the one that introduced me to gordon lightfoot back in 1970 1970 71 and uh he had fallen in love with with the lyric to if you could read my mind uh being that's about an, what what someone would guess is an actor my brother's an actor and um he just said you got to get this gordon lightfoot album this you know has his song on it. it's really fantastic I went and got it. And he was already living in Italy at the time. Had, had uh, gone over to to seek his fame and fortune in the movie business and uh, and theater. Also, he wanted to do theater, and uh, so uh, I went. And I got the Gordon Lightfoot album that was actually originally. I think it was not called "If You Could Read My Mind." It was it was called uh, "Tall Tall Stranger" or something something like that. Uh, yeah. and, and then they changed it because they realized that the, the hit was if you could read my mind. Mm. Yep. So, um, and he obviously been huge in Canada, but we didn't in Texas. I mean, we didn't, we, we didn't have an FM station. We had a pop station and a country station. And then we had a yeehaw cowboy, <laughs> uh, called the, 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 uh, we uh, it's old Mary, you know that kind of <laughs> station. Good. Yeah. That kind of station. Well, I used to go to the the auction sale with my mother all the time. My, my mother and my grandfather. But um, we, I've just found Gordon Lightfoot so uh, engaging, and so um, well, his songs are obviously autobiographical songs, and you just kind of fell in love with him as a singer and a poet, and and he was damn good looking guy too so you know anyway um through the years so uh, after coming out to california and meeting up with saul davis and he started managing kathy valentine and i the band the text tones and through all through those years i always kept that song in the back of my head that my, it was my brother's favorite and um i just every time there was an elvis tribute that was the song that you know, uh, early morning rain. You mentioned it. That's the song that I would always pick to to do for the Elvis tribute because Elvis loved that song and he played it live. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. and uh, it it became kind of that was the song I would they when they would call me and say you gonna do early morning rain. I'm mean, yeah I'm gonna do early morning rain. <laughs> they yeah. said okay great. So the band would always know it and and through the years I had always played that uh, as my Elvis bash uh, tribute song. And then, I guess, I don't know, we were talking about doing songs by Gordon Lightfoot, and then I came up with the idea of uh, ladies sing Lightfoot, and let's do a, an album of all women singing these very, <laughs> obviously, male songs. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of them are pretty, you know, you, there, a lot of, some of them you couldn't do as, as a woman, you really just couldn't do them, but some, some of them you, you can kind of get there, you know. Well, right, but that's yeah. what makes it interesting makes when it, when a woman sings it from yeah. her point of view. I think that that kind of changes the the context of the story well, and the song. And I'm not totally sold on gender specific. I think that you know, like Joan Baez always sang songs that were, you know, a, 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 as a woman, as a as, as a man's story, and never bothered her. Mm -hmm. So I figured it wasn't going to bother a lot of my the people that I had picked to to work on the record. And so uh, we we just decided we were going to make this record by hook or crook and. It happened that we cut most of the tracks uh, before the COVID lockdown. So most of the tracking was all done. Most of the vocals were pretty much done, except for one or two that had to be, uh, we had to do by, by file sharing, you know, long yeah. distance. And uh, the Susan Cassell was, was one that she did with, with um, a couple of musicians herself in her uh, I think she was in New Orleans when she did it, but she had already, you know, it was such a, that's such a poignant song for, for someone, it's a sad song and it's such a poignant song for her because she'd already lost two brothers, one to the Katrina hurricane disaster in New Orleans and then 
another one in Canada, and then uh, a third one to COVID. Oh mm. my God! Wow. And some in laws to COVID, and then she, she it was very tragic time for her. So uh, when she actually sent me the the uh, tracks to mix, uh, just just bawling like a baby listening to her sing it because she's such got such a well she's such a great vocalist anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and that song is probably the one that if I'm going to cry, that's going to be the one I'm going to cry. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. And I dedicated the, dedicated the album to my brother posthumously. Oh. Uh, it came out, it came out uh, after he passed. Oh, very so, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I've, I saw on your website, there's a picture of you with Gordon Lightfoot. Mm-hmm. When did, uh, how did that uh, occur? And, that, was, and- <laughs> that was taken in 2018. Uh, he had come, no, 2000. 2019 he'd come through and played he plays LA all the time yeah. I mean and we always go see him every time he plays and uh, it, it, someone did a, a biography of him um, several years ago it was, I don't know four years now it's been four years ago and they did mention that they saw me backstage with Gordon Lightfoot and <laughs> you know the Carlos and the Techstones and so I, I was a footnote in the you know in the index of that book uh, but uh, he he's just a what can you do with a guy like him? He's we're just never gonna stop. He's like Bob right. Dylan. He's mm-hmm. never yeah. gonna stop. Right. Exactly. Yeah. He'll take yeah. his last breath at a microphone. You know, 100%. honest to God. Yeah. No, I was shocked that he's playing the you know playing a couple dates in L.A. in uh, in he, a few months from now. I'm like, I can't imagine. He well, you know he's and you know. he would when I, we were supposed to go see him in at the uh, reopening of the of Massey Hall in Toronto oh. uh, back in. 2021 i think it was it was, it was supposed to go it was at 2020 i can't remember now 20 2021 and and he had to cancel it because uh he fell and uh, sprained mm-hmm. his wrist and he's working mm-hmm. around the house i mean you know it wasn't like he was on the roads but he had to he had to let that mend and then he's back you know just call, doing it again so, can't so, wait no good for wait. him i know I, uh, we'll see you there all right yeah, yeah i know yeah. exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Does Gordon Lightfoot have a, a train song? Um, uh, he must. He oh, must. Are you kidding? I'm he trying has to think. Canadian, of, the Can- oh, Canadian Canary- Railroad Trilogy. Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's the one that Katie Moffat uh, recorded on the on our yeah. album. She she did the Canadian Railroad Trilogy, and that's it's right. okay, just fabulous. Oh, he's got other train songs too. But, I kind of figured because yeah. yeah, that's uh, yeah. yeah, Canada. That's that's, <laughs> that's, that's a big uh, that's a big train big, country. Yeah, big, big totally, and and. Uh, and when when Katie said she was going to do that song, I said, "Ooh, Katie, it's eight minutes long." And she went, "Yeah, I know. Isn't that great?" Like, yeah, that great? So we're thinking it's not going to be vinyl. We're not going to care. We're just going to you know go with it. So when when it's vinyl, you got to be the songs have to fit obviously on yeah. the vinyl. So but we were we at that point we didn't care about vinyl because we were vinyl was was the last thing in, during COVID that we, anybody was thinking about. But uh, yeah, she and she did. She nailed it in one take, all eight minutes. Guitar, right. she played guitar and sang it, and didn't make any attempt to say, you know, can I redo that? And it's a, there was one little section I had to edit because it was there was a, a some sort of little digital something or another that went on that we needed to fix. Other than that, it was completely perfect. It was perfect.